Kelly hits the entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. And suspense. I've seen any woman ride before. I'll see you do it again at one of the fairs. What are you doing out here while she's practicing? I'm supposed to help her if she gets into trouble, I guess. Have you ever known your sister to get in any trouble she couldn't get out of all by herself? No. Say, where'd she ride to? Blue Ridge. She'll circle back in a couple of minutes. Down, Andrews. But Marsh too much to talk. Come on. Whoa! Hand me the money bag. Get off the bench. You too, mister. Get out of there. This ain't a schedule stop, is it? According to my time, why? We don't stop till Diablo. The plans have been changed. Let's have your money. You gentlemen ain't planning on robbing us, are you? That's the idea. Supposing I just tell you I ain't gonna give you my money. Abner Hockey ain't afraid of you, no counts. Maybe this will change your mind. What's the trouble? Nothing I seem to say scares this guy. You road agents just keep your cotton-picking hands off of me, that's all. Tough guy, ain't you? How much cash you carrying? The way I look at it, that's my business. I suppose I just take this hey. as a souvenir. You give me that bank. Now, that's mine. Yeah, no. Sounds like you're shot, Lofty. Mm -hmm. I heard it. Stop your worry, Antag, and he's probably just practicing. My name's Abner Harkey of Biloxi, Mississippi, at your service. Ma'am, I want to tell you what you just did was the most amazing thing I ever laid my eyes on. Well, thank you. I don't usually go around riding Roman style like that, but I was out practicing and I saw the outlaws spook the horses. Them no-count cotton pickers got my gold watch. I got to get it back. My daddy gave it to me, he did. Well, there's plenty of time for that later on. Right now, I think we better go back and pick up the horses and that driver and get this rig into town. Is there uh, anything more I could do to help you up there, ma'am? <laughs> no, thank you. You better just ride inside. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm Ellen Hockey's brother. <laughs> yes, I, I figured that. Okay. Huh. That shot we heard, Lofty. Annie could have gotten into trouble. Oh, Tank. Letting your imagination run away with you, I... Holy Toledo, Annie. What happened? 
Wanted for robbery. Looked like the same bunch we've been after. Snout the runaway, too. Saved my life. What's the matter, Lofty? Oh, he's just surprised because the runaway turned out to be horses instead of my imagination. <laughs> Say, are you a law officer? That's right. This is Ellen Harkey's brother, Abner from Mississippi. Deputy Sheriff Lofty Craig and my little brother, Tag. I do. Hi. I do. do. Uh, no offense, Deputy, but where was you during all the excitement? Well, I... Uh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Letting a little sprite of a gal like Miss Oakley run around catching the stages and all? Uh, just a minute, mister. Abner, Lofty is a very good lawman. It just so happened that I was there and he wasn't. Don't seem right somehow. Well, I reckon I better pitch right in and help catch them no-count outlaws. Say, were you a lawman back in Mississippi? Well, uh, no. No, not exactly. But I reckon whatever needs doing, I, I, I can do it once I set my mind to it. Are oh, you folks from Mississippi so modest? No, sir, we're not. Why do you ask? Um, I think we'd better get on back to town. We'll uh, follow you in, honey. Right. <laughs> there you go, Abner. Well, thank you, Tag. Much obliged. You're welcome. Now, let's see. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, first off, I think we ought to organize us a citizens' committee with me at the head, naturally. Then I... Wait a minute, Abner. I know you want to help, but Lofty can handle it, I assure you. Just what experience have you had tracking? Well, uh, me and Napoleon, we... That's my hound dog. Uh, me and Napoleon, you know, we, we used to go slashing through the swamp. Well, we, used to, we used to track most everything, you know, bear and possum, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. A nice thing about bear and possum. They can't shoot back. But outlaws can and do. Abner, this is a job for the law. Maybe after you're around here for a while and learn the area, you... My, my daddy always says there's no sense in putting off till tomorrow what you can do today. Well, Abner, if we need help, I'll sure call on you. But uh, for now, let us handle it, huh? Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I reckon it's all right with me. Look, Abner, Lofty is paid to do a job. And generally, when private citizens get into it, they just get things kind of all mixed up. Well, it uh, appears I'll have my hands full helping my sister Ellie anyways. You ever done any ranch work before? No, no, I never have. But, uh, well, I ain't gonna have no trouble with that roping and riding type stuff. It'll just come natural. Sure it will. <laughs> we'll ride out with you to Ellen's. Tag, you stay here. These saddles none too soft, do they? Stick with it, Edner. Nothing you can't do once you set your mind to it. Well, it ain't exactly my mind I'm a-setting on. I wonder what that deputy's doing out there. What's the matter, Andrews? Your conscience bother you? Relax. Maybe we ought to clear out of here and join Marsh at the Canyon hideout. Look, we've got nothing to worry about. We're safe right here. And Marsh will take good care of the money. Get you back to work before they think we're loafing. Abner. Well, I declare, Ellie, you're prettier than ever I remember. Hello, Abner. I've been expecting you. Well, you don't look none too happy about it. Smile, Ellie. Your brother's here to take care of you. I am glad to see you, Abner, but I've really been doing fine. Ask Annie and Lofty. Your sister's a very good rancher, Abner. I ain't denying it, but she has a man's work. I aim to take the load off on her pretty shoulders. But you've never done any ranch work, Abner. Well, no, but I aim to. Why, inside of two days, I'll have the rest of your cowpokes working overtime to keep up with me. If your brother works like he talks, Ellen, you won't need any other hands. Let's go over to the barn. My foreman can tell us more about what needs to be done. To the barn it is. We'd better oh, get on back to town. Wait a few minutes, Annie. I'd like to talk to you. All right, Ellen. We'll wait. Coming this way. That kid's the one from the stagecoach. You just keep quiet. Let me do the talk. Come on, let's take this inside. Good afternoon, folks. Vic, I'd like you to meet my brother, Abner Harkey. Howdy. Abner's going to be working with us, but he's new at this. You'll have to break him in. Well, that's fine, Miss Harkey. 
Anybody special you want him to start working? I ain't afraid to tackle anything. You got to throw my way. Well, doggone. Where'd you learn to talk like that? Mississippi. Are you making fun of the way I talk? Nobody's making fun of you, Abner. I went through the same thing, too, when I first came here. You soon lose your accent. A Mississippi kid, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I kind of like it. Yeah, you boys can call me by that handle from now on. <laughs> I never did cotton much to Abner, did I, Ellie? Well, uh, where do I start? Well, might as well start right here, Mississippi. Clean up the barn. Shouldn't be too hard for a, a tenderfoot. I don't know as I like the way you said that, mister. It's kind of like you was being sarcastical. Well, you got me all wrong, kid. It's just that I am falling here. I figure a man's got to start at the bottom if he's going to get anywhere in the world. You just don't give me no trouble, because when I'm foreman, I don't know as I'm going to be wanting your kind around. Abner, let's keep one thing clear. I still own this ranch. I know that, Ellie, but now, I know more about things like this now. You just leave it to me. Why, well, Vic's been my foreman for years, and as long as he's here, he gives the orders. Your brother's just blowing hot air, miss. Don't worry about it. Kids are like that. I'll take some of the fire out of him. Maybe you'd like to try it right now, cowboy. You better settle him down, miss. Wouldn't want to hurt him. Hurt me? You just take off that jacket and we'll find out who's going to get hurt. Abner, don't you be a fool. Now, you just clear out, Ellie. It's going to get rugged. Oh, I declare. Now, you just stay in the corner. Come on, boy. Let's fight. Hit me. You better stop him, Lofty. He doesn't stand a chance. Now, let him try, Annie. Might do him good. He's right, Annie. It's about time Abner learned he can't take on the whole world single-handed. You sure getting me in trouble with your sister, Mississippi. But I suppose we might as well get it over with. That's what I say. <laughs> that ain't nothing to it. Hey, you're a regular tiger, aren't you? Oh, sorry, Craig. I guess I lost my head for a second. Let me at that cotton picker. Easy, kid. Fight's over. I could have taken him. Yeah, sure you could. You're kind of young to end up in Boot Hill. No hard feelings, huh, kid? Go on back to work, Vic. I'll have a talk with Abner before I send him to you. And please, no more fights. Of course not, miss. Now, me and your brother are going to be real good friends. You drop around the bunkhouse after a while, Mississippi. I'll show you around, huh? Come on, Andrews. I reckon some people never learn. Say, you uh, you pack a pretty good wall up yourself, Lofty. Thanks, Abner. But we won't always be around to get you out of all your scrapes. I advise you to slow down a little bit, boy. Ain't nobody gonna bother the Mississippi kid. You know, Abner, a caution's a mighty important thing. Courage is fine, too, but you'd probably be a lot better off if you'd use some good old common sense. You got what it takes, Abner. Use your head and you'll make a good cowboy. Bunch of blasts for the kind words, deputy, but not being by nature a modest sort, I kind of had that figured out. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm gonna stir up lots of dust here, boss. Ellie, I'm gonna go put my things away. See you folks later. Well, do you always like this, Ellen? That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Annie. You see, Abner was sickly as a boy. He could never do the things most boys his age did. He developed a brash and cocky attitude to make up in words what he lacked in strength. Seems in good enough health now, Ellen. He is, and he doesn't realize his handicap won't keep him out of trouble anymore. He's forgotten the meaning of fear. Try not to worry about it, Ellen. We'll see that Abner doesn't get in any trouble. She means the Mississippi kid. <laughs> Aren't you? Yep. See, uh, where's Annie and Lofty? They went out on a few errands. They'll be right back, though. She sure feels good to have a brand new shooting iron in my hand. <laughs> you ought to be pretty careful with that thing. No sense in worrying, boy. I've been handling these things a long time. 
better put away. You're just liable to... I don't know what happened. You all right, Tech? I'm okay, Lofty. I'm sure sorry. I was just practicing with my new gun. Abner, a gun is a very dangerous weapon, and you should never draw unless there's a reason for it. Besides that, you had six shells in the cylinder, and you should always keep one chamber empty, the one the firing pin rests on. Well, I was just trying to do some fancy twirling. Oh, well, you mean like this? Oh, oh, oh that's fine. Yeah, let, let me try that. Uh, I don't think you better, Abner. Annie's been practicing for years, Abner. And as good as she is, she still uses caution. I see you're all ready for ranch work. Yes, sir. I'm gonna bust a couple of mavericks today, boy. <laughs> Say, uh, tell me, how you coming on finding them no-count outlaws? Uh, not so good, I'm afraid. But these things take time. Yeah, I reckon so, yeah. I sure hope you find them, though, because they got a valuable watch of mine. And about $20,000 of this town's money, too. Yes, ma'am. Well, I tell you, if you run across anything, you let me know. I'll be glad to help you track them. Oh, we'll do that, Abner. I tell you, why don't you drop out to the ranch sometime and watch me work? Might be interesting. I'll bet it would. Boy, what a character. Oh, you think anything will ever tame him, Annie? I don't know, Lofty. But if it does, I'm afraid he'll never live to meet it. <laughs> yeah, but I don't get it, Rick. I don't get it at all. Why we stay on here making peanuts when we get more than $20,000 waiting for us? Because we got a perfect setup right here. Roundup's coming. The stages will be loaded with cash. We're going to take most of that cash before we pull up. Oh, boy. What time's that stage to end today? Four o'clock. Got about three hours yet. Why, you cotton picker? That's my watch. Well, get a load of Mississippi with you, Andrews. All decked out like a real cowboy. You look good, kid. Never mind that. How'd you get my watch? What you're talking about? This is my watch. Well, there ain't no chiming watch in creation. Sounds like that, and I had no it anywhere. You must be the stage robbers. Easy, Mississippi. It ain't smart accusing people of things like that. But you just give me it back, and I'm putting you under arrest. Look, kid, I bought this watch. That's right, kid. I was with him. He paid ten dollars for it. He did. You're lying. You made a mistake, Mississippi. Forget it. Only mistake I made is not whopping you good the other day when I had the chance. <laughs> well, I guess this settles it. Now we gotta pull out. Right up the canyon, hide out and get marsh. I don't need no help, sis. Oh. I ain't a little boy no more. Abner, it's not your job. Abner, listen to me. Please listen to me. Don't you worry, Ellie. The Mississippi kid can handle it. What he was getting into. I tried to stop we him. We all tried to warn him, Ellen. Did you see where he was headed? Toward the canyon area. You've just got to stop him, Annie. You've just got to. Tag, you stay here with Ellen. Oh,
Watch you cotton pickers. Come out with your hands up. I got you surrounded. Now, I'm going to give you to the count of ten. Mississippi kid. One. Two. I always figured he was crazy. Now I know it. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Marsh, get out the back. Set up a crossfire. That's a dirty trick! That is a close one. Any closer? I wouldn't be talking now. Don't seem fair somehow. He's sneaking up toward me like that. Well, he could have shot me. A possum would never do that. I thought we told you not to tackle this yourself. You sure did, ma'am. I reckon you knew what you were talking about. A man could get mighty seriously hurt around you. You just stay put. Yes, ma'am. Annie, I'm going to try to get to the bar. OK, Lofty, I'll keep him busy. Well, I'm just about out of these things. We'll get back there, start reloading, and keep low. Let's do that. We'll have to make a run for it. Grab the money. I wasn't going to hurt him. I just want to get my watch back. Still taking to. <laughs> I guess we're all still ticking, Abner, but for a minute there, I wasn't too sure. Oh, this is a fine watch. My daddy gave it to me, he did. Yes, sir, Ellie. That dinner kind of took me back to the old days in Biloxi. Oh, I tell you, daddy would be mighty proud of your cooking. He'd be mighty proud of you, too, Abner. I always knew you'd grow up to be a fine man. Took you in and lofty to show me the way, though, sis. Man never has to be ashamed to ask for help, Abner. Doggone right. Well, Mississippi, now that you're foreman around here, you've got quite a job cut out for you. Well, it won't be too hard with me running things. You see, there ain't a ranch foreman in the whole territory that can touch a candle to Abner Harkey uh, when he sets his mind. Yes, go on, Abner. Uh, what was the question again? About the job as foreman. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, but the most I can say is I'm going to do the best I can. I, oh, I got lots to learn, but I think I'm going to make it. I need help. Uh, now, you let that be a lesson to you there, boy. Don't you tackle nothing bigger than what you can handle by yourself. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. 